Ramadan Mubarak, and welcome to Ramadan Reminders. I'm Yusuf Estes, and I'm excited to continue talking about the subject we were talking about yesterday, Ghiba. What was Ghiba? I'm going to read it to you again. Uh, it's in the Quran in Surah Al-Hujurat. By the way, during the month of Ramadan, this is a great surah, a fantastic chapter. I think it has, it's chapter 49 in the Quran. I think it has 18 verses. Yeah, 18 verses. And that's not very much. You might like to memorize this whole entire surah during this month. You memorize it in the Arabic language. It's very nice for you. And this particular verse is number 12, chapter 49, verse 12. And Allah is saying, O you who have believed, Ya yuladina amanu, avoid, stay away from negative assumption. And indeed, some of this assumption is sin. And we found out that maybe if you were seeing somebody do something you thought was evil, and you went and told other people, then you came to find out actually they were doing something good, you misunderstood. Now, you did a bigger evil even than what you thought because you have damaged the reputation of this person. It continues, though, and it says now, then we'll listen. It says, don't spy on each other. Don't be looking around, what's this guy doing, you know? And don't backbite each other. I know, talk about spying. You know, spying is uh, is something that's uh, very dangerous. It's easy to do. You begin by saying, well, you know, there's my neighbor. I need to look out for him. Let me keep an eye on him. See, how you doing? How's everything? How's it going? Uh, you know, looks like he got a new car. All right, what's that all about? Oh, look, he's putting something in his mailbox. Okay, maybe he got some mail today. Uh, why am I watching this man so close? And, oh, he left his window open. Let me see what's inside his house. What's going on in there? Let me look in there. Let me, what's he doing in there? Oh, oh, what's that? Oh, 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 what's that? And what am I doing now? I'm spying. Oh, <laughs> I thought I'm the FBI. Well, they call it the, I'm the Dawla, the one who's spying on you. Look at, ah, checking out. Uh-huh. So now, but in fact, this is so forbidden in Islam to go around spying on each other. And there's no reason for it to start with. Nobody asks you to do these things. You're just doing it. It's shaitan telling you to do it. You go and you start spying. Well, guess what? At the time of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he heard about somebody who was peeking through, peeking through something, trying to see inside of somebody's tent or their house, you know. And he said, even if you poke out his eye, it would be all right. Why? Because this man has no business putting his eyes into your business like that. So if somebody, you see somebody, you know, spying like that, you should tell him, hey, stop that. That's not in Islam. That's a bad thing. Especially now we're in the month of Ramadan. How are you out here spying on each other? I want to come to the next part of this. So it's very important. It's talking about backbiting. We said this is riba, and it's like, Allah is saying here, comparing it to, would you like to eat the flesh of your dead brother? Eating the flesh of your dead brother? You know, it's forbidden in Islam to eat the meat of the khanzir, the pork, or something like that, the pig meat. You can't do that. And you also, you can't eat the meat of certain other animals. Unless what? Unless you're dying and there's no other food to eat, and that's all there is, you could eat it. This counts for human flesh too. You're never allowed, even even if a living person takes off some of their own flesh and cooks it, you couldn't eat it. I don't know who would be crazy enough to do that, but there's some crazy folks. But you're not allowed to eat that as a Muslim. Unless what? Unless you're dying. This means that if a person was dead, and if there was no other food to eat, and if he were going to die, then it could be that a person could eat even from this dead person. But how would they like it? I would hate that. You would hate that. That's what Allah is saying. You would hate it. You would detest it. And in the same way, you should guard your lisan against saying anything about this man. Because as you're speaking about this man, he's not there. It's like you're biting his back. And that's why we call it in English, it's called backbiting. And Allah is giving you that example. You, wouldn't, uh, you would not like to eat his dead flesh. So in the same way, you should hate backbiting. Uh, there's another point that goes along with this too. And that is that whenever you're talking about somebody like this, 
you might say, well, even if he was here right now, I would have said the same thing, so it wouldn't be backbiting. But guess what? It would still be ghibah, backbiting, even if he was right in front of you. You say, well, there he is in front of you. Say it now. Well, I'll say it now. You're this and you're that and you're so and so and so. But he's in front of me. I'm not backbiting him. I'm front biting him. Uh, that's not funny. Because the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said that ghibah, ghibah is something that your brother would not like said about him, whether he is there or whether he's not there. So even if he's there and you say it, it's still ghibah if it's something that hurts his feelings or he doesn't like it. And by the way, it's anything that he doesn't want said about him. You mustn't say it. You mustn't do it. There is only very rare exceptions to this rule. And it's not really backbiting at that stage. You're complying with Islam. If you know, for instance, that there is a man and he's very, very stingy with his money. He won't spend it. You're not allowed to go around and tell other people about that. You're not. And if you know another man, maybe he's a little bit rough with the way he treats his animals. Maybe he's rough with the way, he, you know, with his family, things like that. You're still not allowed to go around and tell anybody. Unless what? Unless it's going to hurt somebody else to allow it to go on. In this case, you have to speak out against it. And I'll ex give you the example from the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. There was a woman who wanted to get married, and she was thinking about this man or that man. And then the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, not this man, because he's very rough on his family, the way he treats them, physically. Very tough. Don't go with this man. And also don't marry this man, because he's very, very stingy. He won't spend on you. You'll be in a horrible shape. Rather, how about this man over here, who is very kind to his family, very generous with his family, and this is somebody who would be a better husband for you. And she married him and had a very good life with that man. So this would be an exception. There are other exceptions as well, such as if you know that uh, if somebody wants to do business with somebody and you know that the guy's a crook or a cheater, then you must tell him, don't do business with this guy. If somebody come to you and ask you about somebody, how about this guy or that guy? Say, well, I've had a bad experience, so I don't recommend him. Or I know something that maybe you shouldn't do it. But you don't go into details and tell the whole story. And that's just a good reminder from us from the Quran. And by the way, the Quran is also called the reminder. It's adhkar. It's something for us to use to remember Allah and to keep this in mind. So this is one of the many of the Ramadan reminders on our program. And don't forget we have the website called RamadanReminders.com. That's RamadanReminders.com. And visit us on the Internet. Until tomorrow, this is Yusuf Estes. Assalamu alaikum.